Hello everyone, happy afternoon, a very good afternoon. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. Uh, a quick note whether the audio visual is all good. Start, start. Message of it. Am I audible and visible? Yes, okay, all right. So welcome to the today's YouTube live session where we are going to have on this YouTube channel a series of fast five clinical MCQs and these questions, uh, uh, okay, these questions are going to be all interesting questions, a lot of concepts that are going to be reinforced that we would be learning, uh, right, and um, it's going to be mixed back. Apart from that, we also have the ongoing plus course uh, where uh, where I'm taking biochemistry crash course as well. Today is the last session at 6 p.m. And then we have at 5 p.m. as well today, uh, we will have a free live class that is a special class. That's a free live class on the app. And the session is going to be about uh, top 10 cadaveric images and mixed with uh, radio anatomy images as well. So there are going to be two ca uh, few cadaveric images and few... Um, you the radio anatomy integrated questions that we would see. So this is going to be like KBMD again. That's a live quiz with the leaderboard. So very, very interesting. And it is going to be very, very high yield. Right. So uh, no worries. Well, it's absolutely fine. Yes, I run the uh, crash course. If you're talking about biochemistry, it's good enough uh, to answer your questions in the exam. All right. And we have the Achievers batch as well, uh, the second Achievers batch that we have started on the platform. Uh, so all the students on the plus uh, can definitely make advantage of it. We will be doing entire rapid revision till the exam. KBMD on surgery uh, will be there tonight, then in the later half. I will update that in the evening class. Okay, the first one we have is at 5 p.m. All right, and apart from that, on the platform also we now have the MBBS Prof 1, Prof 2 and Prof 3 subscriptions, uh, professional year subscriptions which are available at uh, very, very affordable prices, right? It's hardly like any, uh, any price. So uh, make sure uh, your juniors, your younger siblings make the best of it. So let's start with this one, the first question. I hope you are able to see that. Lengthy questions, clinical questions, a lot of conceptual questions that we have. What do you think? I'll just uh, label these options because these are not labeled. So it is A, B, C, D and E. Thank you, Chandra. Okay, what do you think is the answer to this one? I am uh, yet to get, I am yet to get the answer, the correct answer to this. Majority of you are answering A. Why do you think A is the answer to this? Okay, let's just try to answer this. The question talks about, the question talks about, so whenever you have lengthy questions, always, always, always use this trick. So I can see Himanka getting this right. The correct answer is E. Okay, the correct answer is E. So read the last line. This patient's ascites is most likely developed due to which of the following changes in the portal, uh, portal capillary exchange parameters. Second last line, there is increased JVP, lower extremity edema. And that gives me an idea that when I have high JVP, when there is lower limb edema present, I think about, uh, you know, I start thinking about heart failure. Which heart failure? 
when there is raised JVP and when there is lower limb edema, it is a right heart failure that I start thinking about. So right heart failure is what we start thinking about. So the right heart, when the right side of the heart fails, the back pressure leads to the back pressure, basically increased JVP that gets transmitted. IVC Vagera say also this will go to the hepatic sinusoids. So there will be increased pressure there as well. So basically the hydrostatic pressure is increasing in the portal capillary system because there is increased fluid which is coming. The back flow is coming from the heart. So a lot of pressure. So this is going to be there's there will be congestive hepatomegaly that you would be seeing. So the portal capillary hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is hydro water, increased water, increased fluid leading to the increased pressure. So the hydrostatic pressure increases. So what will happen to the oncotic pressure? Oncotic pressure is because of albumin. Oncotic pressure because of albumin, right? Here nothing is getting affected. Just give me a minute. All right, I hope I am audible now. Yes, Skyra there. So there is no one around at home. So you might see her coming in between the class, uh, uh, you know, because there's no one at home. So the door is open and so she would be there all around. So the portal capillary hydrostatic pressure would increase and uh, oncotic pressure is because of the albumin. Albumin will get affected in the later stages when the liver is affected like significantly but in the early stages the oncotic pressure would be normal. Portal capillary permeability of course again will not be changed. Right the capillary permeability also will not change. It changes in conditions like let's say malignancy which damages the endothelium that would uh, affect the uh, capillary permeability. Already the hepatic sinusoids they have the endothelium which is fenestrated. The permeability anyways is high. Okay, so the answer here is going to be the increased hydrostatic pressure. It's going to be increased hydrostatic pressure. The first option that you rule out is C, the hydrostatic pressure will not decrease. Now, what is the cause of right heart failure in this patient? Let's have a look at this one. The cause of, okay, the cause is basically, okay, the cause is uh, basically about uh, acute pulmonary embolism. So pulmonary embolism, we know that it can lead to the increased pressures and the right heart failure. There is also a history of emphysema. Emphysema COPDs by itself, they can cause uh, pulmonary hypertension because remember that the only circulation in the body, the only circulation in the body where you see that hypoxia leads to constriction, vasoconstriction is which is that only circulation, the pulmonary circulation. So hypoxia of any cause like emphysema, it can lead to, it can lead to pulmonary hypertension and that can lead to right heart failure, which has been precipitated by pulmonary embolism, right? That was the first question. Let us go to the next question now. Again, a similar sort of question. A, B, C, D, E. What do you think is the answer to this? So again, always in lengthy questions, remember that it is the last line, uh, which is very, very important. The last two lines, which are very, very important. Correct. So I see a lot of confusion here as well, but many students have got it right. So Ameya, Vijay Raghavan, Sayantan, very good. So the correct answer here is option E. Thrombin time prolonged, PTT prolonged, activity of factor 10 is decreased. Activity of factor 10 is decreased. So anticoagulants, antiplatelets, remember is a very, very important topic for your exam. 
extremely important topic antiplatelets anticoagulants there was a question in the recent inict as well right so uh, the question is about all the history is not really required again the trick read the last line this medication is most likely to cause which of the following changes and which is the uh, which is the medication intravenous heparin infusion is started so they are basically asking that heparin jab start karenge to kya hoga thrombin time ko ptt ko 10a ko i do not really need to read the rest of the question so that saves a lot of time for me okay that saves a lot of time for me so what is the mechanism of action of heparin at least we know that heparin give me a minute right so uh, heparin right uh, heparin uh, is uh, basically heparin acts by what is the mechanism of action heparin is a indirect thrombin inhibitor remember it's not a direct thrombin inhibitor it is indirect thrombin inhibitor how does it indirectly inhibit thrombin basically by activating the enemy of thrombin that is anti thrombin so it is anti thrombin so suppose if i want to kill thrombin i ask the enemy of thrombin to kill the thrombin i don't kill it directly so that is what heparin does it does not kill thrombin directly but it asks the enemy that is anti thrombin so it activates anti thrombin then indirectly it is inactivating thrombin and also factor 10a so these are the two ones where it is it is acting so thrombin time is going to be prolonged because the thrombin is inactivated so thrombin time is prolonged for activity of factor 10a again it is going to be decreased it is the activity of factor 10a which is going to be decreased and remember for aptt and pt for heparin and warfarin okay so heparin and warfarin the trick to remember is remember happy and wept so the two opposite emotions one is happy and the other one is crying so happy is heparin acts on aptt it increases aptt and the warfarin is pt okay warfarin is pt it is the extrinsic pathway so warfarin increases pt inr heparin increases aptt okay so ptt is the partial thromboplastin time will also be prolonged is this clear with everyone the concept of heparin and can we give heparin orally can we give heparin orally no remember that all the parin drugs heparin enoxaparin fondaparinux all of these parents are given parenteral okay parents are given parenteral what is the example of direct thrombin inhibitor and what is the example of factor 10a inhibitor direct so you have the drugs which act on thrombin and factor 10a directly for direct thrombin inhibitor we have like dabigatrin okay dabigatrin it's a direct thrombin inhibitor right uh, argatroban even that's a direct thrombin inhibitor 10a inhibitors are riva roxaban epixaban that is 10a ko ban karne wale so these act on the respective clotting factors directly heparin is acting indirectly by activating anti thrombin okay so thrombin time increases factor 10a decreases and the ptt also increases clear with everyone and remember that dabigatrin is the direct thrombin inhibitor which is oral it's a oral direct thrombin inhibitor is dabigatrin so easy to give so this pathway that we are seeing the intrinsic pathway the extrinsic pathway of the clotting mechanism that we are seeing look at the factor 10a okay look at the factor 10 and then activated to factor 10a and uh, then you have which activates 2 that is 2a activated is thrombin that forms the clot so heparin inactivates both of them indirectly the direct 10a inhibitors rivaroxaban epixaban indirect is like fondaparinux it has a 10a activity not the thrombin activity and the direct thrombin inhibitors argatroban bevalirudin dabigatrin theek hai is this all clear with everyone so heparins are acting the red one are heparins 10a and factor 2a okay 10a and 2a that is thrombin is where they are acting right 
So that was about this question. Remember, anticoagulants is very, very important and so is antiplatelets. Next one, let's have a look at this question. Again, whenever you have lengthy questions, whenever you have lengthy questions, always try, always try to read the last two lines first. That saves a lot of time. Let me just see. Very good. So I see many of you getting this right and some are confused between option A and option C. Uh, let's have a look at this question. Again, initiation of this therapy increases this patient's risk for which of the following? And which therapy are we starting? Do fetal line. So we know that this question must be, even if I read these two lines, I know that this question will be something related to some arrhythmia because do fetal light is a anti-arrhythmic drug. Okay, do fetal light is an anti-arrhythmic drug. Tell me which class of anti-arrhythmic drug is do fetal light? This is a class 3 anti-arrhythmic drug. What is the mnemonic for class 3 anti-arrhythmic drug? It is AIDS. Class 3 antiarrhythmic drug is AIDS, that is uh, amiodaron, ibutilide, dofetilide and sotalol. It is class 3 drug. Okay, it's a class 3 drug. What is the mechanism of action of class 3 drugs? Class 3, when I write alphabet K, it is made up of 3 lines, right? So, class 3, remember, is potassium channel blockers. What is potassium required for in the cardiac action potential? It is required for repolarization right potassium role of potassium is repolarization so what happens to action potential duration the action potential duration increases because the repolarization is taking more time because of the potassium channel block so the action potential duration increases so what happens to the qt qt indicates a ventricular depolarization ventricular repolarization so the qt will be increased there would be prolongation of QT and whenever the QT is prolonged what does it predisposes to torsidus D pointus okay it predisposes to torsidus D pointus what is the other name for torsidus D pointus polymorphic ventricular tachycardia right so this will be the answer polymorphic ventricular tachycardia that is torsidus D pointus okay clear with everyone so always remember that the class 3 drugs are the ones which can cause the torsidus D pointers and which other group of antiarrhythmic drugs can cause torsidus D pointers? One is class 3 and which is the other class? The other is class 1A. Okay, class 3 and class 1A because even that block the potassium along with sodium. They are sodium channel blockers and potassium channel blockers. Give me a minute. <laughs> yeah so uh, that was about this question bronchospasm that many of uh, many of your answered see bronchospasm is the side effect of adenosine okay bronchospasm is a side effect seen with adenosine it is adenosine right av block is the side effect with beta blockers and calcium channel blockers thyroid dysfunction is a side effect with amiodarone thyroid dysfunction we are worried about amiodarone contains iodine in its term uh, spellings remember iodine iod iodine so thyroid dysfunction will be with amiodarone clear with everyone so the answer is going to be polymorphic ventricular tachycardia torsidus d pointers which gives that uh, waxing waning pattern in the ecg right the ribbon party appearance so, always remember QT prolongation predisposes to torsidus D pointers. So, you can see that we can actually answer the questions even without reading the entire question. The last two lines are very, very important.
okay in answering that question and this you can also learn from this question that when in atrial fibrillation we use the doe fetal light class 1c or class c drugs to uh, you know for the rhythm control these are for the rhythm control right going to this one so look at this table and the adverse effects that we have so uh, amiodarone metoprolol is bradycardia av block amiodarone is thyroid dysfunction class 3 drugs cause torsidus depointus calcium channel blockers especially verapamil can cause constipation even av block adenosine is the one which is uh, bronchospasm flushing and hypotension digoxin causes gastroenteritis while features and xanthopsia the visual disturbances okay and xanthopsia okay let's go to the next question here what do you think is the answer to this one now and remember that we will have many such questions you know in the today's uh, kbmd of top 10 cadaveric and radio anatomy images integrated we have the special class at 5 pm so for those who joined late uh, that's an update for you am i able to see the light chart just give me a minute Yes, what do you think is the answer to this one? Who is getting this right? Very good. So, Kiruba, uh, Mino, DN, I see many of you. Huh. right correct the correct answer is a very good it is anterior temporal and the prefrontal cortices because what is the diagnosis here so look at this one what do we have is uh strange behavior is what we have okay so 54 year old man brought to the office by his daughter says that the father has been acting strangely he makes inappropriate jokes social rules not followed irritable aggressive right the personality is different and when speaking notices that the verbal output is decreased and it has strange behavior so basically at this age this is suggestive of a lot of personality changes this inhibition all of these are features of which dementia frontotemporal dementia as the term itself says frontotemporal dementia so the temporal lobe and the frontal lobe will be affected so anterior temporal and the prefrontal cortices will be affected remember that frontal lobe has a very very important role in the personality control that is why in which uh, in fact which territory in fact do we also see the personality changes as well behavior changes personality changes we see that in we see that ACA infarct right we see that in ACA infarct which affects the frontal lobe so look at the various types if if this is the given mammillary bodies and medial thalamus is which condition mammillary bodies and medial thalamus is Wernicke's encephalopathy which is because of alcohol right Re always remember this Wernicke's affects mammillary bodies and the medial thalamus okay and the medial thalamus substantia nigra that is parkinson's caudate nucleus is huntington's chorea okay it is huntington's chorea medial temporal parietal lobes right medial temporal sclerosis usme hoga. so look at this mri image what are we seeing in this mri image the prominent sulcus here the fissure here the sylvian fissure so that means that there is atrophy there there is atrophy in the frontal region 
So this is frontotemporal atrophy, frontotemporal dementia. So look at frontotemporal dementia. You would see early personality changes, disinhibition. Frontotemporal atrophy is what we would see. Uh, in which kind of dementia do we see Parkinsonism features? Parkinson's is Levy bodies, right? And where do we have visual hallucinations? Remember, Levy bodies is the one where we have visual hallucinations. Okay, Levy bodies is the one where we have visual hallucinations, right? And uh, vascular dementia is the one where you have stepwise decline. Patient stagnant is stable, sudden decline hai, fir stable hai, fir sudden decline hai. It is vascular because of the vascular uh, infarct. Stepwise decline. Alzheimer's is memory loss is very early there and the personality changes come later. In frontotemporal, the personality changes are earlier. Normal pressure, hydrocephalus. Uh, we have the triad of aid, ataxia, incontinence, dementia. So there would be urinary incontinence along with ataxia in normal pressure hydrocephalus. Prion disease will have myoclonus and rapid progression. Prion disease would be rapid progression. Okay. So this is a uh, can't it just higher picture quality. All you need to do is go to the advanced settings. Okay. Go to the advanced settings. Right. So everybody's clear with this question. Very, very interesting. So the point that we learned is frontotemporal dementia is early personality changes okay it is early personality changes i i believe that this is the last question we are done with four questions fast five may this is the last question that we have and quickly at the end we would revise the fast or uh, the five concepts that we have learned i would suggest that whatever concepts you are learning out of these questions just write it down and you know in just one page the five concepts so that you can keep revising them uh, frequently these all are very very important absolutely right very good it is the phage conversion permitting exotoxin production so the question is these bacteria can acquire virulence to become pathogenic by which mechanism which bacteria it is cornebacterium diphtheri right so remember that for cornebacterium diphtheri it is lysogenic conversion lysogenic conversion which phage is it which bacteriophage is it alpha beta gamma which phage conversion alpha beta gamma what phage is it it is the beta phage okay remember it is the beta phage uh, which does the conversion so what happens the coronary bacterium diphtheri non-pathogenic then comes the bacteriophage, the beta phage, and then that makes a coronary bacterium diphtheri pathogenic and it produces exotoxin. Tell me what kind of exotoxin, what is the mechanism of action of this coronary bacterium diphtheria toxin? What is the mechanism of action of coronary bacterium diphtheri? Okay, Dr. Sandeep, I'll send across the PDF on the telegram group. Very good. So, coronary bacterium diphtheri is ef2 inhibition ef2 inhibition so that inhibits the protein synthesis okay that inhibits the protein synthesis which toxins act by ef2 inhibition elongation factor 2 remember 2 is di and 2 is do 2 matlab di 2 means do so it is diphtheria that is coronary bacterium diphtheria and the do is pseudomonas okay and the do is pseudomonas so diphtheria and pseudomonas they are basically by ef2 inhibition right cornea bacterium diphtheria it's a non-spore forming remember it is non-spore forming causes the pharyngeal membrane gray white membrane which is seen image based question can also affect the heart myocarditis also it can cause also remember bull neck because of many lymph nodes there is bull neck. So all these comes as image based question. Bull neck, pharyngeal membrane that comes. Right. So that was uh, about this, uh, 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 you know, the session. Let's quickly revise the first five questions that we had seen. Iske pehle ek question dekha tha. Right. So ascites when associated with raised JVP, lower limb uh, extremity edema, you should always think about 
we should think about the right heart failure so right heart failure hydrostatic pressure increases the rest of these would be normal next we have is the uh, dofetal light therapy this is class 3 antiarrhythmic drug so it predisposes to torsadus depointus class 1a and class 3 drugs which inhibit the potassium channel next was uh, when you have dementia with personality changes disinhibition frontotemporal dementia that is atrophy of frontal and temporal lobe and the next one cornobacterium diphtheri is lysogenic phage conversion which phage it is the beta phage which makes the diphtheria uh, virulent and the mechanism of action of toxin is ef2 inhibition okay that is ef2 inhibition elongation factor 2 when are we meeting next today uh, we are meeting uh, next at uh, 5 pm right we are meeting next at 5 pm for the free live class on the app very very important top 10 cadaveric images and also we have the we have the top 10 cadaveric images along with the radio anatomy images integrated please do not miss on the session i'm sharing the link on the telegram group so that you can uh, register and enroll for it right away cadaveric images and the radio anatomy images at 5 pm okay that's a free live class okay and then at 6 pm we will have the plus class of uh, biochemistry the last session in the crash course that we have so the plus subscribers we have the class at 6 pm today all right thank you so much everyone yeah this is going to be kbmd like the live quiz with the leaderboard kbmd all right thank you so much everyone goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and keep